Thanks for tuning in. This is Stomper B. Thompson, and here's a few clips from the training day that we had with Meg's Brap. Okay, so just a little bit of house cleaning here on the on the get go. So I'm not going to show all of the clinic um, out of respect for Megs, and this is her business. So I'm just going to show you a few snippets of a portion of the drills we did. For example, we did this really cool game right after lunch that combined a lot of the skills that we were working on in the morning, and it was a lot of fun. But you're going to have to attend one of her clinics if you want to see what that game is all about. Also, I don't show any of the final uh, obstacle course, if you want to call it that, where we it's kind of a culmination of all the drills that we worked on. So I'm not going to show any of that. You're going to have to check out our clinics to see all about that. A heads up to headphone users. I did try to balance the audio as much as I could, but just, just a heads up. But a few comments on Meg's. Man, this was, to, in my opinion, this clinic was worth every penny. I walked away feeling much more confident in using my clutch, my rear brake specifically, and just wheeling the bike and, and balancing the bike and, and really getting awkward with it with my body language to in order to balance it as much as possible. Meg's put in just 100% effort all day. She was a great communicator. And one of the things that I noticed that stuck out to me was she would provide very genuine, very tailored instruction to us as individuals when we're doing our drills, she'd pull you aside and she'd pick out precisely what is keeping you from advancing so and tell you it so you can work on that specific issue. She did that with me multiple times. So I, if you, this is the beginner, I guess you could call it hard enduro training because we're learning a lot of the disciplines that are used in hard enduro, but all of these apply to trail riding and they're just going to make you a better rider no matter what. So. I definitely recommend checking out one of her clinics. This is just meant to be like a little bit of an introduction to a small amount of what you can expect from a full day lesson. Uh, for reference though, this is held at the Southern Maryland Dirt Riders location in King George, Virginia. They've got a heck of a lot of trails that are really cool. So if you're in that region, consider checking them out, but on to the clinic. So if you ever find yourself coming over an obstacle and then ringing on the throttle and getting a bit out of control, this is probably your problem. If you ever find yourself getting a little weak when you're trying to do really techy slow speed stuff, same thing. We want to get those elbows up, twist your wrists in just a wee bit, and now you're stable. Uh, another one, if I tap my knee at you, I'm trying to say correct that vertical lower leg. And then I might be dancing. If you see me shaking my butt, I'm probably trying to tell you, I want to see more body movement. And this will come into play with our cornering. So we need to practice our balance so that we can get to the stage where we're picking our way through rocks and we are counterbalancing and doing what we need to do to keep that motorcycle going in a straight line through the gnar. So this first drill, in my opinion, is going to be the best way to transform your riding in a short period of time. That's why we do it first. And it's called static balance. You want to roll, uh, roll, I guess, Pretty basic a drill bit. here. Just chalk in the front wheel. Okay. And then a little full back. lock. And doing some and standard balancing with a partner. I'm, a, I'm I'm not I'm not doing anything. I partnered up, up with Billy it, here. I'm he was he aced this drill. I swear he's been practicing this one. Uh, I barely had to touch his handlebars at all during the Is whole thing. Is it easier thing. to get up like sitting down and then try to stand or uh, I like to get up with all my weight on one peg and just go straight to standing. Do you? Okay. Yeah. All right. There you go. That's all you. That's the whole point of this drill yeah. though is to unbalance yeah, yourself like so you can correct it. So you want to get cool. on and off, okay, on I'm and off. Get off here and try to okay. hold it. Get off. Yeah. Try to hold it. Get off. Right, whichever side. Yeah, I guess that, I might as well try hard, both. That was the hard part. That's where I could feel you really holding it. All right, three, two. Oh yeah. There you go. What I'm noticing is people are getting onto that balance point, and that's it. Like you can sit there all day. The problem with that is that it's not going to physically build muscle memory to better your balance. So what we want to do is practice destabilizing and recovering. That is going to build muscle memory for balance that will actually translate out on the trail. How was that Patty Holloway boss? Really good. Gets fast, isn't he? 
<laughs> yeah, oh yeah, he's he's remarkable. Yeah, that's Tell him at least you don't have to load your bike up and go anyone anywhere to do this drill, right? Right. right yeah. In the backyard. No, that's the beauty of it. If you practice this at home, you'll see the results on the trail. Really? It's wild. So here we're just doing some S turns, starting to get a good feel for counterbalancing during the turns. We're gonna we're gonna progress this into sharper and sharper and slower and slower turns. Kind of just warm it up a little bit. Everyone's dropping their elbows. So let me remind you, if it feels awkward, you're probably doing it right. Like if you're not used to keeping those elbows up all the time, it's gonna feel absurd. But just keep doing it. If I keep reminding you, just okay, up, 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 and eventually this will become second nature. They're pretty wide, right? Easy to weave through. Now instead, I'm gonna slow things down and it suddenly I'm really gonna have to get my weight out. So what we were just doing, but even more exaggerated. Don't want you to worry too much about the clutch yet. We're absolutely on the clutch. The clutch is the most important tool on the bike. But for the first half of the drill, all I want you to worry about is making that massive weight shift. So everyone here, I guarantee you, I'm gonna be saying more knee, more knee, which means you're gonna be getting your knee out like this, but I want it all the way. So this is a drill that I definitely found I need some work on. We're trying to turn a full lock and we're trying to counterbalance by hanging way this off the bike. This may seem pointless going this slow and you know, the really tight stuff, but this is gonna be what separates you from the group when it comes to, you know, more technical terrain, being able to ride those trails with the big off camber turns. That is this. All that is is being comfortable shifting your weight really far and being smooth on the throttle. It all comes down to body positioning, clutch control, and throttle control. So keep in mind, this is really beneficial stuff, although it seems boring and uh, pointless. It's not boring. It's we right. dig it. Okay, good. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm seeing smiles, so I'm happy. No, good. Hit this up again with the clutch in mind. Now this time, you're focusing on <coughs> shifting your weight enough but also I'm gonna be looking to hear smooth, consistent throttle. I don't wanna see or hear any of this. So I look forward to practicing this a little bit more at home. I wanna get much more comfortable at full lock, hanging off the bike, going as slow as possible. So it all starts with those basic balance drills. Yeah, I hear nothing but awesome things about the betas. Great bike. Feel good. I, I get the end. They'll, they'll find. It's, yeah. this, those are a little more rideable. That's uh, that's the thing that yeah. coming from a KDM for me the main difference. Yeah, I, yeah. I would love to try one one day. I might get one. Yeah. I could see. Met a lot of cool Something classmates comes. there too. So one of the things that Megs does really well is she demonstrates. She'll demonstrate the correct way, the incorrect way of how to do things and uh, she's she's such a good rider it's clean every time so you got to check out her clinics i'm telling you so we continue to progress here we're doing some figure eights trying to go full lock and really hanging off the side of that bike going trying to go full graham jarvis here i noticed that my left hand turns are much easier well for me then the right hand turns. So what I mentioned about the clutch earlier, controlling our uh, forward momentum with the clutch rather than the throttle, this is going to be a simple way to trick your brain and kind of start understanding that concept if it's not quite clicking. So I only show a small amount of this drill, but this one's really cool. Great for learning cl clutch control, and it really makes you more intimately familiar with the engagement point on your specific bike. This guy has a YouTube channel. We yes, watch him. he's famous. Do you? Um, I feel awkward, and that's uh, definitely an exaggeration. Do you have a YouTube channel? Uh, I, I I'm I'm where you go when you want to watch mediocre sea racers Do hit trees. Have... The number one question I get asked when teaching the braking drill is 
when should I use the front brake and when should I use the rear brake? Front brake is an amazing tool and we want to get comfortable using it and I mean it can result in a washout but you can actually use a lot more than you think before you get to that point. We're going to focus on getting to know that rear brake and feathering it and not locking it up. I really like that we started off with these rear brake drills first. In my, in my experience, grabbing a lot of front brake is easier. So doing these rear brake only drills was nice to really help learn how to modulate that. And here we apply both together, trying to get as much bite as possible without locking up either one. down to the ground. So here we're just trying to compress our suspension evenly, which is done through the foot pegs. So you use your arms to help stabilize, but really you want to get all that force down through your foot pegs. And this is going to lead into the next drill, doing a little bit of wheelies. No, but yeah, we're doing wheelies. <laughs> if you ever do a wheelie and you tend to go off to one side or the other, that is your telltale sign that you're pulling up on the bars. So we want to try to relax and not pull up. Let the throttle and the suspension do the work. Less is better. Less throttle is better. Air on the side of less throttle, please. So again, you're just getting a tiny little glimpse of what this day is all about. And I highly recommend checking out a clinic. It's tough for me. For me, it's the timing. It is the timing. Because I feel, I feel, I can feel myself get to the bottom. I'm like, yeah. okay, we'll put in some throttle and then, whoa. Yeah. It just it's comes up on me real, so I don't yeah. know the, <laughs> I think I'll just, <laughs> I'll stick to baby wheelies for now. I got to work yeah, on those. Yeah, just do like, like get it six inches and yeah. then get it 12 inches. Right. Yeah. And then do And 18. just work your way up. Yeah, and yeah. like, because that's really what you need is you need the control to get it exactly where you want it. Right. You know, if you got a log and you're like, okay, I got to pop it 10 inches. You, you want it 10 inches. You don't want it 15. Right. You know, because then, I mean, you can do that and just run your back wheel into it and slam over it. Yeah. But if you got a bigger obstacle that's, say, like this high, you have to place your wheel you have to precisely it. Yeah. to be able to get up and over that. Yeah, so I'm, I'm really struggling with the, um, the controlled bringing up of the yeah. front end. So that's what I'll be working on, I guess. I loved this drill. I slowly but surely got better and better at these wheelies. Pretty terrible in the beginning, but much more improved later on. If you're comfortable with that, I'm not against it, but what I will say is even just having one foot on the ball is going to give you a better compression. What is your bike? A 350. Oh, it's okay. So you're going to have to be on the clutch in okay. first. Like, so that's going to mean letting that clutch out as you apply the throttle, of course. But in order to keep it nice and slow, you'll probably be on the clutch a wee bit. Slowly but surely, I got the front tire up more and more and in a very controlled manner. That's the whole point of this, is doing it under control. getting your wheelies consistently I'm gonna help you out a little bit by adding a slight fear factor so for whatever reason when people are afraid they tend to get their timing a little better with the wheelie drill so when you're coming up if you mess up your timing I'm just gonna joust joust I'm not gonna hit you with it but I'm gonna joust this through your spokes nine times out of ten it just hits the spokes and bounces off but every once in a while I get it. So having that little bit of fear should help with your timing. <laughs> no, I'm going to use the stick to help you guys tighten up your timing just to add another focal point. I actually got pretty decent at these by the end. 
I was able to pop the wheel up pretty high in a very short distance. Uh, you, can, you can see I get pretty excited. <laughs> once, uh, once you get a maneuver and it starts to finally click, yeah, that's exciting. Woo! I'm getting it, baby! <laughs> So you just need to get more and more comfortable with that wheel being up here. We're going to get more practice on the logs with that feeling. Um, but eventually you're not going to, your instinct is not going to be to sit down. So we're going to focus on learning a very specific log crossing technique today. This is a technique that is super useful for certain, in certain times on the trail and in other times it's, it's not a technique you want to use. It's called uh, the log punch. Punch the log at the two-third mark. Suspension compresses and releases. Put your front wheel in the air. Now you have to override the urge to let go of the throttle and drop the front wheel and just stay on it. If the rear wheel comes and you let go of the throttle and it hits with no drive behind it, it just drops the front end right away. Here she is just doing more demonstrations. She also demonstrated some of the things that you can do wrong, which is just nuts. She's so good that she demonstrates all the things you can do wrong. So unfortunately my battery ran out and I only got one of my worst log hops, but I ended up getting a lot better at that drill later on. So I highly encourage you to go check out one of Meg's Brap's clinics. Thanks for watching everybody.